With all this talk about quadratics, you might wonder why do we even bother? Do these do anything for us in real life? It turns out, well, I guess it depends what you do for a living, but uh, absolutely, there's lots of examples of what they can do for us. Uh, so I'm just, I just came up with a few examples that I thought about that, I, uh, that I've actually used. So for example, um, we can actually use what are called parabolic mirrors. So I really like astronomy and uh, it turns out, I think I found this picture. Yeah, I have this picture here. I'm just going to try to uh, take a little screenshot of it here to show you something. Uh, so if, let's just see if this works. Yay. All right, so if I take this uh, picture right here, I'm just going to copy it and save it here. Parabolic mirrors, what happens is if you have a mirror that's actually shaped like a sphere, like I have right here, uh, it turns out that the focal points, in other words, where the rays from the you know star or from the sun or whatever uh, bounce, they'll go in different places. So maybe they're lined up here, but maybe ones that came in narrower like this will end up over here. And they won't be lined up. So in astronomy, if you have a, a telescope that does this, so for example, I have my own telescope, and it has this problem. It suffers from this defect of being a sphere. Now, you'd think, why would you ever make a spherical mirror? Well, it's just because it's easier to make. But if you can make a parabolic shape, in other words, something that's a parabola, remember, that's what a quadratic shape is, then it has no spherical aberration. Now, aberration is actually the name of this defect here, this, this effect of having the different... Um, and different lines here basically go to different focal points. But if you have light coming from stars in a parabolic mirror, all the things always focus at the same place. Now what's actually kind of funny is that uh, in high school, I remember um, a friend of mine and I, we actually made this as a, um, as a sort of a science experiment. We tried to make ourselves uh, some sort of parabolic mirror uh, this is something for our physics class, and I remember our goal was to actually boil water with just the sun's uh, heat. And the idea was well, we had to try to make a parabolic mirror, which is kind of hard to make. We just did it out of tin foil, and it was pretty crappy. But we were able to get some water in here. Obviously, we had this facing straight up, right? So this whole thing right here was sort of lined up uh, Upwards. So in other words, it's like I took this whole thing right here. Just imagine it's sort of like this instead. So now I have the sun's light coming in and we had a, like a little um, a water container here. We we're trying to boil the water. Now, of course, it wasn't a very good version of it. I'm sure we could have done things a lot better. So we couldn't quite get the water to boil, but we certainly got the water quite hot, which is kind of cool. So, I mean, you can definitely use uh, parabolic mirrors. But there's lots of other uh, uses for uh, quadratics. So, I mean, you might think of, uh, well, there's radar dishes. Often those are a parabola. Um, other things, uh, maybe you're looking at bridges, for example. Uh, I've seen some bridges that have a span that does uh, something shaped like a parabola. In other words, here's the, here's the bridge. Maybe here's some water down below. So I guess I'll draw it as blue like this. And maybe this is the ground. I'm really not a very good artist as you're about to see here. So this is the ground doing, I don't know, whatever it does. This is actually a pretty lousy bridge actually, because if I did that, oh, we'd have a problem here. I should probably raise this up a little bit like this. So uh, if I was, you know, drawing a, or trying to make a bridge, it's difficult to make the bridge do this. So instead what we do is we often have um, uh, support structures or things like this and they're often shaped like a parabola so this would be something that's you know uh, this sort of shape so a lot of times we see this type of shape in a bridge a parabola I know that uh, when we went to st. Louis we went to the uh, arch there. that's in the United States by the way uh, so when we were in st. Louis we saw an arch and it looked very much like this uh, so that was kind of neat I mean there are lots of uses for them I know uh, at least me my background is in physics and we certainly have a lot of uses for parabolas in physics. I mean, one thing you can do is, uh, let's just say I have some sort of, uh, I'll just draw an arbitrary x, y axis here. So this is an x and y axis. And what if you have, oh, I don't know, like a, a cliff or something like that. And it's lined up just like this here. And let's say, I don't know, I take someone and I throw them off the cliff. Maybe it's a bit violent, but let's just assume that uh, I'm not gonna hurt them. Maybe this is water here on the ground. So if I take someone and I sort of throw them, you know, up this way, the path that they're going to follow is going to be a parabola. It's going to do this parabolic shape. 
And it turns out if you know a few things about physics, for example, how much uh, gravity sort of accelerates it downwards, then you can actually calculate all sorts of stuff. So like we've been looking at before with the, um, you know, the maximum point of a quadratic, for example, we can do all sorts of things here. I mean, here, this will be the maximum height. Uh, this will be very important. You can actually calculate that just by using parabolas and understanding a little bit about how this works. You could also figure out then where it crosses the x-axis. So in this case, if you look at this, this is uh, where you're going to hit the ground. But if you know, uh, if you set up your scale, you know, like this or your axes, then if you can find this distance, if you can calculate that, then you know how far this person's going to go flying before they run into the water here. So you can figure out that distance, which as we've been doing before, that's just an x intercept or a zero. And it turns out when we're using these physics equations, we actually always get, uh, if we're doing this for time as well, we can also draw this for time. So this could be a graph of, um, this could be time versus, you know, height or something like that. And the person's um, you know, path will also do something similar to this. You know, if they started off at a certain height, it'll take them a certain time and eventually their height will be down to zero. And it turns out if you do the calculations, you'll often get a second answer for time. And that's because this thing has two places where the height is zero. You know, there's one back here and there's one over here. And in physics, when we're calculating for this, we often get a plus value for the time when it's going to hit the ground and we get a negative. And we have to think, okay, what makes sense in real life? Oh, well, the negative, well, we don't think we can go back in time, so that doesn't work, so we'll just count this one. So, I mean, at least in physics, there's lots of uses for parabolas. And if you've ever just thrown things anywhere in any case, then you'll have already some understanding about parabolas. Think about the shape of anything that's thrown. It turns out it will follow a roughly parabolic shape. Well, sometimes it's exactly. It depends if you have air resistance and if it's a glider or whatever else. But assuming it's just like a ball or something like that, it'll, it'll follow this really nice parabolic shape. So there is a reason for doing quadratics and learning about them, okay? We, there is a reason for these things. We can use them in lots of examples, and I'm sure there's a ton of other examples. These are just the ones I could think of.